Good evening everybody. Good evening. I hope you're well on this fine Tuesday evening. And I only knew that because I saw it on my screen just before I came to you. <laughs> I think we're getting a little bit more settled now, aren't we? Um, which is a good thing. And you can see I've changed my set now. I'm ready for my daffodils. So I've changed my set. Hi Gemma. And uh, I'm all ready to go now to greet spring. No, I know it's a long way off. But you see, I'm the, I'm the optimist. <laughs> I'm always the optimist. Always in hope that uh, spring is just around the corner. And what a lovely time of year. Even though it's January, we know we're going to have grotty weather. January, February. I mean, it's awful today, isn't it? If you're sort of... There's a band sweeping across the UK of high winds and rain, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just on the edge of that, and I know that Abby was saying before she went live at seven. At, oh no, when she's going live now, actually, she said the winds were howling and they'd had lights flickering, and so we'll see if we have a power cut. Well, we can't do much about it, can we? Um, oh, Gemma says she got some daffodils from Tesco today. Gemma, well, you've beat me because that's what I usually do. Well, I go to Sainsbury. Well, I do vary, actually, but I go to Sainsbury's for my, my daffodils. And yeah, well, I must go now, then, mustn't I? I can have the whole back shelf full of daffodils. Oh, that would make my day. Absolutely gorgeous. The colour, um, yeah, all of that. It's bright sunshine, isn't it? When we can't get a lot of sunshine. Although, yeah, it was a little bit more sunshine today than, uh, than I expected. Uh, yeah, so I hope you're all well. Now, if you want to go and watch Abigail with her live, because she's on at the same time as me, please go ahead and go and watch Abby and come and watch this um, on, you know, on record later. It's always here, same as Abigail's live. They're always there for you to watch any time that's convenient to you. Uh, we've given up trying to um, look at our diaries and check you know that's that's crazy we, we can't keep doing that so we go live whenever we want to now and um, so uh yeah it's down to you guys to choose it's down to you guys to choose and we don't mind if you choose uh the other person not at all not at all we're all in it together we're all hopefully supportive of each other uh so let's have a look see who's with us we've got um kath or oh, kath just finished her live as well well done kath i'll have, be having a look at that later we've got patricia we've got jill jillian we've got jill again different jill Anne, and and uh, Gemma, of course mandy nicola elaine sandra brenda wendy judith helen jeanette nicola again um oh Nicola has a rechargeable hot water bottle. I mean, that's just incredible, isn't it? I've been thinking about it since Christmas when she got it, and I thought, you know what, it's a really good idea. <laughs> I need to see a picture of it. <laughs> uh, we've got Jackie as well. Jackie's been out gallivanting today, uh, watching some really highbrow stuff. I mean, goodness gracious, way above me. Um, so, yeah, so everybody's here, which is lovely. And as I say, if you want to go and watch Abby, please uh, fill your boots and come back and watch watch this um, you know after eight o'clock or something like that Vanessa says uh, she's new to the platinum group enjoying making a project well Vanessa what, what I do on this page is so different to what we do in the platinum group so um, thank you for that comment but um, we do a little bit more textile art in the platinum group um, and that's the idea of it that we kind of stretch you a little bit and I think we're all enjoying it so far now I treated myself today uh, we are on part eight okay and part eight is actually one small section which I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll get finished tonight if I stop rabbiting for five minutes uh, but I have treated myself and I've printed out a new sheet so if we go to the overhead oh, I'll come back a bit on the, on the bit, bit above myself there um, I've got um, a new sheet, as I say, sorry. <laughs> I'm concentrating on what I'm doing, it would be helpful. Okay, so this is the one I've been doodling on for the last, well, eight or nine days, um, which I gave you a photograph of. And I just want you to take a moment to look at this. This is what we started with, guys, which is lovely. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore what we've created here um, I love the, the colors particularly although I like I prefer the yellows um, 
but we started off really with a real blank canvas and when I look at the Making It Special group and the designs that have been created by, by you guys, it's, it's brought the whole thing to life. I think we found that last year with the 12 day, Days of Christmas. We started off with a few blocks. Oh, thank you, Sue. Sue has sent me 100 stars. Wow, thank you so much. That's very kind. If I miss anybody, it's not intentional. The, the comments sometimes can fly at my screen and I, I do miss stuff. So apologies if, if I've missed you. And thank you very much if you've sent me stars. I really do appreciate it. Um, no, no end. So um, from humble beginnings, uh, this is what I'm saying, you've now created your own masterpieces. Whether you've started or not, I know now that you will create your own unique design from this this starting point which is incredible you've chosen different fabrics you've cho chosen different ways of stitching you've chosen different ways of applying these um to your your um fabric um it's just been uh, an incredible journey for me, never mind you guys, to see what has been created. And in the Making It Special group, if you're not part of that group, it's worth joining because you see what everybody's done. Unfortunately, nobody can post pictures on my page. It's just not allowed by Facebook. So, um, you know, we, we're kind of stuck with that, I'm afraid. That's why I created the Making It Special group. So you can post your Lizzie Makes there. So, so as I say, from humble beginnings, after eight or nine days of scribbling, this is what we've ended up with. And although it's exactly the same, and there's an awful lot of scribbles, look how we, and I bring you into this because you have helped me, look how we have developed that beautiful to this, which is beautiful, but very interesting. Lots of things going on, like Julie with her, her strips here, her strip piecing, and then other people bringing in different colors in here, and, and I changed mine because Bernie suggested it, that I should change my, my sort of re small rectangles here, which I did, and I thought, well, why not? Let's, let's go with what somebody has suggested. And then looking around different things, I've seen um, different sorts of quilting recently, and I thought, you know what, we should, be, we should do this. We should be a bit more creative with our quilting. It's do you don't have to do free motion to make it interesting, because all of these lines, these matchstick quilting is done preferably with a walking foot but with with a regular sewing machine foot straight stitch and just creating that texture and dimension and bringing the whole thing to life um, maybe finding a wavy stitch on your machine and elongating the stitch length to create a bigger wave or taking it down and making a smaller wave so you can do one extreme to the other really um, we've looked at and I'm not going to remember all of the things we've looked at but we've looked at uh, free motion obviously we, we did satin stitch last night we've done decorative stitches we've done buttonhole stitch uh, we've done regular stitching with our regular foot we've done hand stitching with our blanket stitch again we've done drawing with our micron pens um, so we've gone and more there's more that I've done and uh, honestly I can't remember the, we've done so many there's one more technique that I'm going to show you tonight and um, and I think that I've come to the end of the road with applique when you consider how much we have done how many techniques and variations we've done it's been an incredible journey for everybody including me to remind us all what our capabilities are and what we can do and uh, all reverse applique of course because I've got the little picture behind me and that was our reverse applique um, sort of sketchiness and I say sketchiness because I rushed it for you so you could see it um, so all of these things have come together and you are now the um, the proud owners of all that information what you do with it is up to you, you don't have to do any of it um, you could do the whole lot um, in, in a satin stitch and 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 leave it a, a absolutely as it is pristine if you like so if we go back to our lovely original um, but brand new copy um, I was going to get a pencil here we go I'm hoping my pencil will show so this was our first section this was day <laughs> remember that this was day one and two this was day three and four 
This was day five. This was day six and seven. And this is day eight. So this is the section we're working on tonight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let me just check. Oh, eight, nine. Oh, well, we can easily do that. And in fact, we'll probably get ahead now because um, this is going to be 10. But we've got, we've got borders and binding, well, quilting. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it done. I've got an incredibly busy uh, end of the week. So we'll see how we get on with all the quilting, etc. But I'm still so, certainly go through how to finish it off. Yes, I knew four left, Cav, I know. When you think, my goodness me, we started on Boxing Day. And I don't know about you guys, but I left Boxing Day way back, weeks ago. <laughs> That's how it feels. Um, and although it was only what was it last week <laughs> it's crazy isn't it and now we've only got four days to go and that's like where did that time go <laughs> but i think we've all had fun and i've certainly loved having you here with me in my workroom seeing us through the festive period into our brand new year and then now obviously into springtime <laughs> i don't mess about <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. So, um, so yeah, so we're working on that section um, eight and nine. So if any of you haven't marked your sheet, do that, do do that, because even when you come back to it later, it'll save you go through the videos as to what section, because all of the videos are labelled what they are so tonight's video will be labeled eight when we finish this off and probably start this tomorrow then it'll be labeled um nine okay so the finishing off of that is nine the start of that possibly probably will go into there but certainly part 10 will show you this last beautiful tall flower which is possibly my favorite i have to say i didn't know how that would be with such a big flower but i do like it i do like it um, and then, of course, the rest of it is the finishing ones, 11 and 12. But it will be, it'll be lovely to see those last uh, couple of uh, techniques that we need to learn. So we need to crack on, really, because, as I say, I've got one more technique to show you for a plique. And um, it's quite, quite a nice one. And actually, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, because I'm always honest. That's my problem. Um, it's our Nicola that reminded me, because I said to the admin team last night, I think I've covered everything now. Can anybody think of anything else that I might have missed? Um, I can't think I have. Um, and of course, you know, like, you know, we, there's six of us, I think. Um, it, it, um, it's great because everybody has a different idea, a different view, different thought process. And of course it's great because I usually get something back that I hadn't thought of. And Nicola said, oh yeah, but what about the technique, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh yes, of course, I'll do that one. So, oh, hello Millie. So that's what, um, that's what we will do tonight. But we need to get this flower onto our, um, onto our new piece of fabric. So let's get on the overhead again. So of course the square, as you know by now, is 10 and a half by 10 and a half, okay? So we've cu I've cut my piece and I put my um, tear away stabilizer on the back. And as I talked about last night, and I'm not going to keep going through it, but um, uh, I have put a little bit, a little bit of 505 just to keep that in place because I tend to move mine around the desk for you and I tend to, I want to keep it all together. You don't have to stick it like I've done. You can just have it what they call floating. So it just sits behind and you think, well, if it's loose, how is that going to work? It will still do exactly the same as if you had um, just sort of done a bit of 505. Are you looking for trouble, Millie? She's wandering around behind me. Can you hear her pitter-patter? Okay, so I've got all my bits and I'm going to get the pattern so I can see what I'm doing. Now then, I thought that I would go back to basics again. I'll just bring all my little flowers up because not everybody has an applique mat. I mean, they're really nice and um, is that, so that's a rogue one there, so I'll keep that there. They're really nice to use um, and, they're, and they're not hugely expensive, but actually some of us don't have the luxury of an applique mat. So let's go back to basics. Let's move some of my bits. Let's move my bits, my iron, 
You can see that still, can't we? I might make myself a bit smaller. And then let's get this. Because once again, this is where we started from. Do you remember, guys? This is what we did right from the very beginning, was that we used our pattern that's um, available on the website, and there's, it's very clearly marked 12 Days of Christmas, um, to tell us roughly where our flower is going to be on our, our fabric. And this is the placement guide that will help you as well. And you'll notice on the flower that you've got one flower head where this sort of, I'm not going to say corner, rounded corner? This rounded corner goes clock, no sorry, yeah clockwise, okay? This rounded corner goes clockwise, this rounded corner petal goes anti-clockwise, intentional. You don't have to put that there, you could put it there and have the two opposite but that's just the way it was designed. So, um, and it makes it a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? So I think this, this is the one where it goes the other way. Possibly not. Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. So let's just move that into position. We'll keep everything as, as it should be. And then it's just a case of working out what goes first. Oh, Millie's got something. Um, <laughs> Well, the leaves should be put down first and the stems put over the top. Um, so we can do that. And then all the flowers and the central flower goes over the top of the stems, okay? So that's how it's positioned. But we need to get a rough idea of where everything goes. So I'm just going to move everything so we've got a bit of space. Gosh, I don't know what she's eating. She's eating something. She picks up anything, starts chewing. And I don't suppose for a minute John will hear her. So, <laughs> so let's put the stem down. If we get if we put the, the central stem down, um, and make sure you try to follow the curve here. It's all been um, flipped, so you should be able to follow okay. It's sort of like that, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I might have to message um, John in a sec and that goes underneath and the trouble is she'll pick up things that she shouldn't I mean I've got all sorts in this room and she'll pick up things not a pair of scissors but you think she's she's crunching something in fact let me just quickly message John I hope you don't mind let me just do that just in case she's got something she shouldn't have um, Millie, I'll just send that and see what he does. He needs bribery and corruption at, like, liver cake. <laughs> Yesterday, just before I came to see you, she had pinched one of the loo rolls and she was busy on the landing chewing all the loo roll up and the, the whole landing and the stairs was covered in tissue. Oh, <laughs> think, oh for goodness sake. <laughs> They're, they're really very mischievous dogs. Yeah, she tr she tries all our patients. Yeah, she does. Bless her. Um, she, she's had us up for two nights now, on a row. Don't know why. Barking all night. Nothing to do with fireworks. Nothing, nothing horrid. It's just her being. Um, I want some company. I want some company. <laughs> Seriously, it's awful. <laughs> Right, so I'm just trying to get it so it looks like, you can see what I'm doing, I'm trying to build that up. That should come down a little bit, I think. There we go. So I think I'm happy with that. And I just need a leaf on that one. I'll put the other stalk on in a minute. Why is it tissue attracts our furry friends? I don't know, Judith. She drives me potty. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite appropriate I suppose yeah tissue everywhere and of course like you say she's she's long haired some of her hair is it's it's hair it's not fur it's um maybe 12 inches long so it just sits sits on her hair and then she brings it all around the house oh I love her to bits <laughs> yeah anyway she's all right Right, well, have I got one too many? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I didn't want that one. <laughs> Actually, it might come in handy later. 
Oh no, it was on the one, two, three. Oh yeah, I wanted it there. <laughs> right. I bet you were shouting at the screen then. Yes, you did, Lizzie. Are you crazy? Trisha says, Daisy chewed a pair of my cheap reading glasses today. Oh, it's so annoying. Kath says, Frank barks for a, for a pastime, but at least he sleeps at night. <laughs> Lovely. Right, so so here we go. Here's, here's your choice. And we've done this before, haven't we? Where you can either now iron down all of that, or you can iron down the leaves because they, they are underneath the leaves and these two branches. In fact, you'd just take that away, wouldn't you? Um, and then you can stitch right up to the end. Now, if I move that, ooh, I think that moves slightly, and that one maybe. The idea of that is, in fact, that's gone underneath, so I'm gonna have to move that one, but let's leave that for the moment. The idea of that is that you can Where's my stiletto? Vanished into th oh. oh, there's Millie. I don't know where my stiletto is. It's probably under my machine or anything. Well, no, it doesn't matter. What it means is that, that you can start stitching at the point here, come stitching around here, stitch, 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 stitch and then finish there, which means that when you come to put the stem on, it goes over the top of your start and stop points, yeah? So it means that it stays really neat. That's what I'm trying to say. Or you can iron the whole lot down and when you come to those points, let's look at this one here, you would st start here, go around and stop there. And you can use your regular foot. Um, so, you know, you don't have to worry about free motion or anything like that. I mean, the only problem that you might have with your foot if you do the little tiny flowers is that they are little tiny flowers. But there's no reason why you can't use your regular foot. You just got to take time, take your stitch length down to two, even smaller perhaps, um, which will give you a nice curve if you, if you know, if you, if you kind of concentrate your brain on it a bit, yeah? So it's all, all of that is possible. We never say anything's impossible. We always say it's possible. So what we can do is we can take this off and this off and now we've got our leaves perfectly positioned, yeah? It looks a bit weird, it is, but we can, we can actually iron those down because as long as you're careful, your leaves are in the correct position, yeah? Do you understand? Yes. Yes, Lizzie, we understand. <laughs> So you don't have to, you know, oh yes, it looks weird, but by the time we've stitched them and then we put our stems back on, everything is in the perfect position. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, Paula says, I've really enjoyed making the blocks, but I'm going to take my time and hand stitch all the applique. It might take a while. It, actually, um, Paula, it might not take as long as you think, seriously. Um, you know, it might surprise you. Once you get um, hand stitching away, um, it, it could be that you'll, you'll whiz through. You know, put a good film on. I don't think any of the films that were on over Christmas, I was very disappointed with. I mean, I don't, I like the sound of music. I love Julie Andrews. I think she's an absolute fantastic lady, but I didn't want to watch it again. <laughs> I think I'd have preferred Mary Poppins. <laughs> <coughs> right, let's bring the machine in. And I will, I haven't got this set up for straight stitch. I've got it set up for free motion. So I will change my foot. I'll, I'll put you on side camera in a minute. So I'm taking my free motion foot off. Yep, and I'm putting the feed dogs up and flicking my switch. I'm putting my regular foot on. Well, when I say regular foot, it's actually a zipper foot. But it's a really nice foot. <laughs> I think I've got cream cotton in the bobbin. Now, I may not have, but I think I have. And um, I'm going to use my variegated, sort of my dark green. It's, you can see the sort of tones on that. To be honest, I, I would have liked to have used my light green, but it really was 
a bit it, it was so perfectly matched that you lost the sort of effect so I thought hmm I think I need to up, up my game and, and either use a darker thread or get the variegated out which then you have the best of both worlds don't you so let's get this uh, threaded up don't forget I've used a top stitch throughout a top stitch needle sorry throughout um, it's a great needle to use for free motion and an embroidery in general it's got a big eye as well so I think that helps with metallic threads and yeah I think actually there might be green in there in the bobbin and don't forget to test your stitches out might as well do do what I say say as I do do what I say do do what I said hmm. anyway and that's lovely Stitch is a bit too big, so I'll turn that down a bit. Nice stitch. I have got green in the bobbin. That's pure luck. Okay, so let's get that sorted. I don't know quite what the side view looks like, but we'll give it a go. Well, it's not bad. Not bad for a first attempt. Let's get that perhaps a bit more like that. Jeanette says she ordered some top stitch needles today and it stayed large and it said, so, oh, it's a stated maybe a large eye. Is that right? Yes. Yes, 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 it is. It's a large eye. Okay, so I'm going to bring my little square up now. I'm going to remove my flowers, which I left on there. Otherwise, I'll go all over the place. And so I've got my six leaves <laughs> uh, perfectly positioned. So don't forget, we're going to start stitching from these inner points here. So if you want to, you could mark them to make sure you, you remember where you're starting and stopping. Um, I'm going to do a little sort of um, vein going up the middle. I'm not going to do too much fancy work because um, some of the other flowers I've done are quite fancy. Thank you, Sue. Um, so let me just position this right. In fact, you know what, I'm going to do what I say. I'm going to mark um, all of these. Um, as the as where the stop and starts are yeah and then it doesn't matter if I move my fabric around I know exactly where I'm stopping and starting that makes complete sense so let me just bring it in a little bit for me so again um, it, we're doing free motion so I'm not a big pardon we're doing applique we're not doing quilting so if you want to bury threads make them super neat keep them super tidy you do that but it's not necessary you want to be able to uh, trim your thread so where we've got a little tail there sorry I got my head in the way just trim that off because you don't want to take that thread along with you which look that wants to do that's it got rid of it now um, so you just want to trim the tail off but I wouldn't worry at all about what's going on underneath, you know, on the wrong side, on underneath. So just follow, just be careful. And like I say, take your stitch length down. Mine is now on two. And where I, I just cut a thread accidentally um, at the point here. So I'm just going to go back up there, just so I've got continuity. And then I'm coming back down because I want to put that stem in the middle. So I'm just going to literally do that and cut my threads. So don't forget, we are not doing quilting. We are doing decorative applique. Now, if you want to put a back stitch here to, to secure that last stitch, please do. Um, you could put a little drop of glue on the back to make sure that the, the threads don't come through. Um, you could put a little bit of quilters tape on there so the threads don't come through. So you're, you're kind of you're protecting your stitches. You could if you've got a system, I don't, if you've got a system where it stays on the spot and knots, then do that. Um, you do what you are comfortable with, but for me, this isn't going to be in the so a washing machine twice a week. This is going to go up probably on a wall somewhere and will probably be there for about five years before it even has seen, sees a wash. That's how um, we live our lives, isn't it? 
Um, you know, for instance, now this is a question, right, this is a question. How often do you take your curtains down and wash them or take them to the dry cleaners? I was thinking about this the other day. Because <laughs> I was thinking I really, really should take my curtains down and take them to the dry cleaners. But then I thought, I wonder how often people do that. Is that something that you would do regularly or or is it something that you would do every spring, you know, or is it something you're never really bothered about or what do you do? What do you do? I'm interested, I'm curious. So look, when we get to that bit there, we can give it, I don't know, one little back stitch and maybe that would be better security for you, yeah? It's, it's whatever you know, works for you. I'm not here to tell you what to do other than offer you suggestions. So Shadia says, my curtains are changed in the spring and summer, the spring, the summer and the winter. Wow, what do different ones? So do you have like a spring set, a summer set, a winter set? Wow, that's posh, isn't it? Wow. Oh, I'm well behind the times there then. <laughs> that, oh, life's too short, my friend. Mine, a velvet. Oh my gosh, yes, Gillian. Velvet. Oh, how decadent. Dawn says she's got blinds. Well, I've, I've got blinds as well, but I, I have the curtains too. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting, isn't it? Um, Nicola says snap <laughs> to Dawn. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's funny. Yeah. What else do we do? Can't remember the last time I did my curtains. Sue, you're you're in my camp because no, I'm not going to admit. Yes, I am. We bought this house maybe 14 years ago. That's when the curtains went up. Okay, don't judge me. <laughs> Sorry, the hands are there. <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> it's like that thing, isn't it? You just, they're just part. They're just there. They just, yeah, I think um, I think they get hoovered. I've got cleaner. Uh, I think they get hoovered, so they're not dusty or, and they don't look mucky. <laughs> this is why I've been pondering. This, this is terrible, isn't it? Admi admitting my sins. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Is it a sin? I don't know. <laughs> I thought I'd ask the question though. Tricia says, I have voil curtains and blinds. Voil are much easier to wash annually. Actually, that's true, Tricia. Yeah. Oh. Actually, where you live, voil would be perfect, wouldn't it? There we are. You can see how we're getting along. So we'll just do the next last two. So who else is going to, they're too heavy, well of course. Oh, Michelle says, I just buy new ones when we redecorate. Ah, yes, well, you see, the redecoration business is sort of on the list for this year. We, we do re definitely, yeah, we do definitely need to redecorate. I'm not sure how much of the house will be redecorated, but, hmm. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from with that. That's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I'd put off the redecoration then. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, look, backstitch has got a little loopy bit on, so we'll cut that. Not bothered. Uh, one more to do. Yeah, they look, uh, they look okay. Look a bit weird floating in midair, but it'll all come better in a minute. Ah. Uh, Sue says, yes, she vacuums her curtains. Oh, good. Yeah, that's what we do. Well, I say we. Somebody somewhere does that. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I was thinking, I was, I, was only, I was at my dad's today. It's care day today for my dad. And uh, I was thinking about his curtains and what my mum would have done. I can't remember what she would have done. Perhaps it's something she did and we, we never discussed it. I don't know. So I'm doing these little um, leaf stems in different directions. 
I suppose um, what you could do if you wanted to, oh, I've got another little hook there, let's get rid of that. Uh, what you could do is draw those lines on before um, you stitch, like anything else. If you draw the lines, you've got a good chance of making it all a bit more of a success. Okay, so let's have a quick look on the overhead again. Let's just uh, go back and what we need to do now, let's go, keep moving these flowers about, let's get rid of them. Ooh. Got lots of bits now, I'm trying to keep them all together. I don't, don't think that's a possible at the moment. What we need to do now is put the stems and um, what have you back on. So let's just take the uh, the marks away. That's it. Give it another iron because every time we take it to the machine and do the stitching uh, we're creasing it up so keep, keep it all nice. Uh, so don't forget these little bits here um, actually go over the top of the leaves but they go under this so I think we reposition everything and take the main this main piece off so let's just reposition this um, yep that goes like that let me just take that down a wee bit so if I bring my drawing in it's complete with my flowers you can see yeah, we're not far off. This one goes under here. So let's position that. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. And then this one goes here. Under there. And that goes like that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So you can see that although the leaves are floating, they're not now. So we're going to stick these down, take that away. So let's just stick a little bit down so they don't move. You can do the same with the leaves. And again, what that means is that we can start here and here. And let's put a pen mark on there. It's a bit hot, so it might not work. Yeah, that's OK. Might disappear in a minute. Um, and then we know where we're stopping and starting. Can you see it's fading? It's because it's hot. So <laughs> oh dear. Right, so we, let's put that under the machine. We'll bring, uh, bring the side back in. Oh, what's this? What's this? My curtains were from, from 1977 to 2021, vacuum regularly. Oh, I missed who said that. Um, then there's something else. So let me just have a look because I want to know. Here we go. Oh, here we are. Vacuum regularly, but only dry clean once. They were drail on and cost £300 to dry clean. Oh my gosh. Sue says, good reason not to, to dry clean. And Trisha says, wow, cheaper to buy new curtains. Um, Shadia says, I have so many over the years that after the spring has gone, uh, these go back up for another two years. They cost a lot here in Canada, so not redecorating any, de redecorating any time soon. No, I don't blame you. No, I don't blame you at all. <clears throat> yeah, I think we have to be really sensible, don't we, of what we do. Gosh, I'm sure it's very trendy to change your house every five minutes, but oof, I don't think I'm that interested. Right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go up one side, across and down the other side. We don't have to worry about going over the bottom of that one because that's going to be underneath the stem. Your stitch length really should be about two because it'll help you go around the corners. Just move the fabric really slowly. Pivot if you need to, just to take yourself around, um, and try to keep those lines as fluid as you can, really. Um, and uh, you'll be able to do this um, in a better position than me and look over the top of your work. That's what you need to do. Just um, take your time. Um, even if you do just one stitch and then move like that, then do it. Okay, it's worth it. Otherwise, you, you'll finish off thinking, oh, I wish I'd taken a bit more time over that. So because that end of that stem is going underneath the other stem, uh, I have uh, not bothered going across the bottom there. So I've gone up, across the top and down. Let's see if I can show that to you, like a so. 
um, and then let's do the other one so it's 22 8 and I want to show you this other technique um, so we'll get to I think quarter two and then we'll um, stop what we're doing and I'll show you this other technique and by marking here and here as I just did with my pen um, I didn't even have to think which was top and which was bottom so that's that's beautiful so both of those stems are on so it actually looks like that okay and this is this is probably the best way of building up a plique because you're hiding your 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 um, stitches you know your the ends of your thread so it make, keeps everything nice and neat so let's just put a little bit of heat on there so don't forget guys to always to have your iron to hand take your work to the iron the iron is your friend it should be uh, by your side all the time and um, you know that you press your work as you go so let's just position that is that the wrong way around no I thought it looked like the wrong see does it go that way no it is the right way <laughs> just checking um, so yeah so lay that over the top it should be fine and by golly it is so if you haven't got an applique mat this is how you would build up your work and then of course you're going to iron the stem down and you're going to stitch that before you stitch the flowers okay so there we are so we'll take that to the machine again so apologies all this I feel like I feel like you're being a ping pong ball today <clears throat> now because um now this is where again we need to think about stopping and starting and when I did the first one I thought oh I did I should have done this the other way around so if we look at the design yeah this is a a piece that you're going to see so don't start there whereas this top bit here is where the flower goes so this is where you stop and start up here right so we just make a little mark let's do it and then we know when we get it to the machine uh, where you're going to stop and start okay I remember the last time I thought oh silly me didn't think well I've done the thinking for you I've done the mistakes for you all the non-thought processes <laughs> and, um, and and this is why I can say to you and if you didn't see that particular video I can say now don't forget where your stop and start points are I'm going slowly because I'm going around corners waves curves I'm trying to be as neat as I can Obviously, if you're using thread that matches absolutely identically, then you don't need to worry too much about your stitching. But if you're using variegated or a darker thread or even a lighter thread, but certainly a darker thread, um, you'll be able to see all of your stitches. So you'll never see me rushing when it comes to things like this. Just take your time, let the fabric move as it wants. There we go. So it doesn't take long and worth all that effort. I'm a bit wonky, but I don't mind you seeing. Um, see where I could have come in a bit more, but I'm okay with that. So now it's the case of building up the flowers. I've got a couple of minutes. Well, we've seen this before, but we'll do it again because we don't have an applique mat this time. We are using, doing this technique as if uh, you haven't got those, those tools and all you've got is a straight stitch. As I say, you might come unstuck a little bit with the flowers because they are tiny, really. Now you could look at the, the pattern again. <clears throat> so let's bring that in. Oop. And we'll do, we'll, do, we'll do this one up here. So what you what you need to, what you need to do is kind of um, oh have I run out of bobbin? I might have run out of bobbin because it doesn't look like that stitch there. I'll leave it for the moment. 
because I don't think we'll have time to stitch these. But you, you could stitch these with a regular foot as long as you take your time and you reduce the uh, stitch length. As I say, it's on two, it could even go down a bit more because that'll help you go around corners. So you could use a light box too if you've got a light box. You may not have. This is why we're just doing it as we're doing it today to remind everybody you don't need any fancy equipment. These could all be stitched with a little tiny running stitch all the way round. That would look awesome. I do love a bit of hand stitching. Um, and then you can uh, so you, yes, yeah, so you can use your straight stitch on your machine, but just tiny little stitches. Take your time, moving your, uh, you know, pivoting with your needle, or you can um, hand stitch. So I think I've run out of bobbin because I can see I've got a loose thread there. You might not be able to see it. And there we are. So there's our first flower. I think that's perfectly acceptable. And then we can just iron that down. And well, okay, I'll iron it down, but I need to fix that bit of stitching. Um, I need to redo that bit but I can, I'll do that uh, tomorrow. So then it's just a case of putting all your other petals down and stitching them, sticking them, then stitching them with whatever method you decide. The other thing you could consider for this center flower, the little center, is to fill it with French knots. Oh my gosh, it would look amazing. And of course you can use your micron pen again. I think I've got to, haven't I? To actually um, lift that design up. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm really loving how the micron pen has helped in lifting the design. Okay, so I'm gonna keep you there on the overhead because I'm going to show this other technique that's a bit of rubbish, let's get rid of it. And we're going to just do one little thing. So if I get, oh look, I've got a nice bit of scrappy batik. So we had that from the other night, do you remember? I keep all my little scraps just in case I need them. Okay, so you need a beautiful piece of fabric, whatever that might be. You also need something to go behind that. And it could be, a piece of muslin you need something really 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 thin um, even a thin poly cotton is quite good but a muslin is even better this is G700 which is a it is like a muslin with a glue back to it okay so I need you to treat the glue as the right side okay so where's my pen so just in case we forget because we don't want to put the iron anywhere near it. This is the glue side and it's so it's the right side. Okay, with batik it doesn't matter. So we're going to stitch these, these two together. I mean, we don't really need to have that on there, but it's just a good reminder if you forget. Glue side, right side. Batik, whatever. So let's put those two together. You can pin if you want to. Let's do that because we can. And you're going to use a, pattern, a paper pattern piece, which of course I haven't got, or you're just going to draw freehand. It depends what you're doing, what the pattern is, whether you've got templates or whether you're just creating something gorgeous, okay? It could be any shape. It could be a leaf, it could be a heart, it could be a square, a circle. It could be any shape you want it to be, but we'll do a leaf because we like leaves. Leaves are friendly. Um, so we're going to draw a leaf, you, as I say, it could be anything. Now the stitch line is what I'm drawing, okay? Um, so bear that in mind that it's, well, let's be honest, it could be that's your template and then you stitch, I don't know, out. It, it, you know, you could want, you know, you can, you could do like a seam allowance. I mean, to be in truthful, that ought to be the other way around. Dash line for stitching and um, a, a solid line for the outside. So, so it, 
Ooh, whatever that shape is, that's your stitch line. It's just easiest. So that's what we're going to stitch. We're going to stitch on this dark solid line, okay? So let's take you to, oh, now I've had my bobbins run out. <laughs> Let's just find a bobbin. Hold on. Hold on, Caller. Let's just quickly go to the front camera. I've got a variegated orange. That will do. <laughs> I've also got a variegated something. Ah, here we are. Violet says, I did mine with a straight stitch at 1.5. Perfect. Perfect, Violet. Perfect. Yeah, out of thread. Um, it really does make a difference when you're stitching curves to take that stitch length down. Otherwise you get a clunky, clunky curve. Think of a sixpence. An old... No! Thrupney bit. Does anybody remember a Thrupney bit? <laughs> oh dear. When did we go decimalised? I think I was about 11 when we went decimalised. And a thrupney bit. I, I suppose it's like the 50 pence coin, isn't it? It's got the straight edges. That's what I'm trying to get into your head about. L using a long sti longer stitch. If you keep it to two and a half or three, you'd end up with a clunky circle. Yeah. Thrupney bit. Goodness me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's get you so you can see. Kathleen says, I do. Nicholas says, what's that? I've never liked Nicola. So <laughs> there's our shape. And I'm going to use that solid line as my guide. Let's just, oh no, I'm, I'm all right, I'm on two. And, and again, pivot if you need to. Yeah. Never be afraid of a, pri not a privet, a pivot. <laughs> Trisha says, youngster. Mm. Margaret says, I do. Gillian says, yes, I do. <laughs> oh. What did you get for your pocket money then in those days? Now, I used to get, not every week, it was only when mum and dad could afford it, there's five of us, I used to get a sixpence. So, um, you know, the little tiny silver sixpences. 6D. That's worth two and a half pence today. And I used to save up for a dinky toy. Then we had a lovely little, well, it wasn't a toy shop. It was an electrical shop. But in those days, they sold everything, didn't they? And uh, I used to save up for a dinky toy. I don't know where they are now. But um, yeah, Mr. Beaumont's. <laughs> oh, those are the days, eh? Right, so I've stitched around. As you can see, nice dark thread. Pink on the other side, variegated. Be pleased to see. Uh, so now let's do the rest. Let's just uh, put you on the, the overhead. And I'll come in a little bit. I'll come in just a wee bit. So you can see a little bit clearer. There we go. I got a shilling. Who said that? Trisha. Oh, Trisha Boyd. She would. Well, you see, her mum spoils her. I know all about her mum. She spoils her. Always has done. <laughs> I haven't forgotten about the long arm, Trisha Boyd. I have not forgotten about the long arm. I'm still waiting for mine. Oh, best not cut that bit. Sorry, I'm just getting you a piece of fabric so I can show you. I've got to cut a piece off, which is breaking my heart because I don't know where I'm cutting this off of. But we need we need a sample, and there's a reason why I've used used uh, G700. Okay, there's a reason. It's always a reason. And I'm not. I don't do things willy nilly. <laughs> okay, so this little scrap of white that I'm ironing is your block. Come on, use your imagination. This is your piece of applique, and we're just going to trim it down. Now, because it's curves, of course, it depends what it is. You want to, you know, give it a fighting chance, and 
snip into it. So I've cut the seam down to, well, I suppose it's about an eighth of an inch. So we can still snip into this. A nice sharp pair of scissors. I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to trust that it'll work nicely. Perhaps snip off your points if you want to. Um, I'll just go do a bit more. Give it, give it a fighting chance, as they say. Okay. Uh, that will do. That will do. Okay. So we've snipped into our curves. And we've got this lovely leaf shape, sorry, messing about. So we've got a lovely leaf shape. So now we want to be able to turn it through to have the most perfect piece of oblique. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a sharp pair of scissors and you're going to literally slice the back open. It doesn't really matter how big, but you don't want to go right up to your stitching, but you want it to be a big enough slice to be able to turn it through without too much effort. Otherwise you're going to stretch it. And, oh gosh, sorry, just, that's it. Sorry, my screen goes funny every now and again. So just turn it through. And really you want something nice, not too pointy, to get into your points. Don't forget we're dealing with what, what's an equivalent of muslin. So if we poke the, the points out too much, uh, we will lose our points. So let me just, I'll get uh, my magic wand, because that'll do so much and then you can use a pin to take the points out. Now, like I say, you do not want to be taking an iron to this at all. So let me just get a pin. And you want a robust pin. So a nice stainless steel pin. One that you would not use on your quilting project. So you want to work at that point and try and get it to the best of your ability without completely ruining your project. Otherwise you've got to do it again. If you end up with a blunt point, leave it. Just leave it as it is. When you look at the bigger picture <clears throat> of your project, excuse me while I just put a little bit of uh, lick on my fingers, you want to roll these seams out and spend a bit of time doing this. By having a little tiny stitch and snipping those curves, you will end up with the, excuse me, the perfect curve. Don't, obviously you've got to be careful you don't stretch because of that, okay? Just be, I'm sorry about licking my fingers, but it's the only way. We all do it. But since, but since COVID, we're all a bit, little bit worried about stuff like that, aren't we? But finger press it. Now do not put an iron near it until you're ready, okay? So work on it until you are 100% satisfied. You've got the perfect representation of what, your, uh, what it should look like, basically. And then because we've used the G700, we've marked it the right side, so we know this is the glue. You can actually then glue it down to your project. You don't have to glue it down. You can, and what I think I might do is just flip this over so it does it quicker, is that you could just lay this down and kind of like um, just hand stitch it. Okay, so I'll just give it a bit of a chance to adhere. I think it's safer to do this from the back in case you mark your fabric. And I'm hoping that heat has gone through. Yeah, so that leaf is now attached to my piece of fabric and it's a beautiful piece of applique but you do want to hand stitch this down so you you want to go in there with the tiniest of stitches I mean you know I'm, and I'm talking tiny so uh, you could do a slip stitch let me just see if I've got a nice little tiny needle here mm, not bad take a piece of thread We'll use cream. So you might think what colours, but I would probably pick up, in fact, I would pick up um, a fairly good match. Um, a neutral cream or grey is, is just as good. Um, and then you're literally going to hand stitch it. But you could, you know, 
I'm saying hand stitch it, but you could still do your blanket stitch around there. You could still do your straight stitch around there or your zigzag or your satin stitch or whatever other patterns that you've got on your machine that you love. I'm just going to start in the, in the middle. And you, you know, you do whatever you want. So you're literally going in and then coming out well, I'm kind of just getting the lining. I'm not. Um, I'm not even going on the green fabric. I'm, I'm. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, that's lovely. I'm coming up where the cream is. The the, the you know the G seven hundred. I've got something there. What is that? One of my hair. I shed hair like there's no tomorrow. So I'm, although I'm not doing tiny stitches, I'm actually coming up in the seam. So if I let's just do another little stitch there. So this all this will all depend on how you've um, ironed all this. So I've done. If we have a look, I've done one, two, three, four, five stitches there. And I bet you don't, you can't even see them. And again, put the iron on it. That iron is your bestest friend. You can see on the back where my stitches are and from the front you absolutely can't. So it'll, it'll kind of give you the look of needle turn. I like needle turn but it's, um, it's quite, a, quite a technique to actually do it and get a nice result. So this is kind of like a cheats way but again as I say you could run your machine over that. That would look really nice. Yeah, do some embroidery on there. Oh yeah, the world's your oyster. Right, so there we are. We are actually um, on... No, we're about a minute late. <laughs> so I hope you found that useful tonight. You know, we've covered so many things. I think at the end of it all, I'll list on each of the parts on the videos what techniques we've covered on that video. Um, and then if you're um, wanting to look back at some one certain thing, you'll you'll find it. You know, you'll you'll just have to look at um, the the information on, on the on the description, you know, at the top. Because at the moment all, all I've put is 12 days of Christmas part eight, stuff like that. But maybe I'll list the techniques we've used. And we're just about done. I can't think of anything else that I need to cover. <laughs> I think I've exhausted my applique knowledge, <laughs> which is probably everything. Somebody will come up with something. If, listen, if you do, I'll look through the, the comments and you can tell me. Uh, that's great, which is great. And then I'll do it for you so everybody can learn. That's the main thing, isn't it? We share. Right, OK, so my homework tomorrow is to finish my three-headed daisy flower. So we're ready then to put on the top and bottom uh, units, the small you know, the ten and a half by five and a half rectangles, top and bottom. Um, and then the next one is the tall flower. So um, we'll probably, I'll probably do a bit of that as well, just to get ahead. Um, and uh, then we'll be ready for all of the, I can't believe what I'm saying, the, the borders and the binding. And of course, for my borders, I'm going to do the piano keys. And I'll show you a quick way of doing piano keys. OK, so, um, so watch out for that if you're interested. And I will see you um, tomorrow night at, now, where are we? Wednesday. Yeah, we're OK. So Wednesday at 7 o'clock, I will be here. I shall see you then. Have a lovely rest of your evening. Take care. Do some homework. Get some pictures on the um, Making It Special group. And because uh, I love to see it, I really do. And I want to see anything that you've made associated with this uh, 12 part series yeah i feel quite important now 12 part series not many people have a 12 part series <laughs> right i'll see you tomorrow night guys bye thank you for watching bye